When do number one and number one equal a great profit one? When you join the forces of Andrew McInnes and Carmine Bianco. Andrew dominated this past NHL season, finishing 144% in profit. In simple terms, if you would have bet $100 per percent of play, you won $14,360 betting hockey this season. By also playing $100 per percentage on Carmine Soccer Plays, you won an additional $11,936. And don't forget the World Cup is back this year, giving this package even more value. A full year of soccer sells for $9.99, while NHL through the Stanley Cup is regularly priced at $6.99. This package regularly retails for $16.98. But head to either handicapper's page and get this Carmine and Andrew NHL soccer combo for only $11.99. What is going on, guys? Andrew McGinnis here. We are back. Puck time is back. I could not be more excited today. Carmine and I are here to break down, well, give out some futures. Talk about some futures, divisions, Stanley Cup maybe picks, some Dark Horse picks, and plenty of more action to give out. Guys, I just want to say really quick that our early bird special and my special with Carmine is flying off the shelf. Make sure you take advantage of it while still there right now. Early bird special, $5.99. That will go back to $6.99 uh, in just a few weeks. So $5.99 early bird special. And that great special I have with Carm. One year of all of Carmine's soccer plays, one year of all of my hockey plays. You can get that package at either of our profiles at wagertalk.com. But Carmine, I am super excited. Hockey is finally back. We've talked about this for several weeks, uh, even months leading up to this season. We are excited. Uh, hopefully no more, you know, COVID uh, stuff for players getting out of the lineup. Hopefully teams can stay healthy. Hopefully we have a great, successful season of puck time. Uh, what do you look for with futures, Carm? What, what, what goes through your brain when you're deciding who you want to take some futures on for divisions or a Stanley Cup? Uh, predictions yeah uh, first of all andrew uh welcome back i'm looking forward to to hockey season i've been watching some of the preseason games i haven't really played uh any of them uh i'm just watching them from from the sidelines uh for the most part but it was an exciting a lot of movement again during during the off season um the, the east looks absolutely tough but we're just gonna we're not gonna do a comprehensive breakdown i think what andrew and i really wanted to do is just let you know about like some some Stanley Cup contenders and dark horses that we like, uh, some divisional winners that we like, and uh, some team totals that we like as well too. So you just can get a thought of uh, some plays that we are going to be putting in, and like the ones that I mentioned, I, I will put in. But to your question of like Stanley Cup contenders, um, I'm going to mention like three of them, a couple a couple of favorites, uh, a dark horse, and then there's going to be some omissions on them. You're going to be like, how can he not consider the Colorado Avalanche, a, uh, a Stanley Cup um, contender that you want to take. Of course they are. I'm just not going to tie up my money uh, on a low price. If you follow me at, at Wager Talk and you follow my future bets, um, you'll know that a majority, if not all of my future bets, are teams that are a 10 to 1, 12 to 1, or higher. And, and the reason is, uh, my end game with future bets are a lot different than everyone else's. Most people will play a future bet and just wait till see if it hits or not. Mine are, I'm playing on a team that I I know will make the playoffs or in soccer, the knockout stages, and are going to go deep enough that I set myself up for a profit-making hedge opportunity. It is what I do each and every time with my future bets. If you look at the Euros, Italy 12 to one, I did not hedge that out until the final against England and made a profit on that. Uh, Denmark, I gave that one out at 50 to one after they lost their first game and said, this is a team that is gonna make the knockout stages and make it deep. They played against England in the semifinals of the Euros. England was minus 200, Denmark plus uh, 50 or uh, 50, uh, plus 5,000 or 50 to one. If you cannot hedge a profit on a minus 200 against a plus 5,000, you should not be sports betting whatsoever. Chelsea, 20 to one to win Champions League, that gets there. Uh, last year, Real Madrid at 18 to one and then 33 to one after they lost their first game for my clients. These are futures they hit. So the St. Louis Blues, 18 to one to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, those are the ones 
that you can write them out and those ones all won, or you can hedge them for a profit, Andrew. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing here. So uh, shall we talk some Stanley Cup contenders? Absolutely. And it's definitely a strategy that's worked. You have the resume that proves it. And of course, you know, um, we could always come on these shows and just give out the favorites. <laughs> we could give out, you know, the top three teams that the odds makers think. But you and I want to, of course, set up for a hedge, but also try and look for these plus prices that we think as well might change throughout the season. Right. And that's a huge thing that I look for is trying to get a number that I think won't be there in January, February. Right. And that St. Louis Blues pick, you know, you look back to some teams that, you know, their records, um, you know, in November or January or even February when they turn things around or when they fire their coach, it really is incredible to see how they can change things or really pick things up. And so I will say, Carm, I do some future betting pre uh, mid-season, but I do m the majority of it pre-season because during the season, there are some spots you can jump in. But I want to make mention that with that early bird special, that $5.99 at both Carmine's page and my page, you're going to get all of our official picks as far as the predictions for cup goes, divisions goes, um, season point totals for teams. So we're going to discuss some today. But if you want all of our official client releases, you have to buy our NHL package before the season starts. Carm, let's jump in to some cup predictions that we're looking at here. And uh, we have the board, of course, uh, from DraftKings for today. What are you looking at here? Of course, we see Colorado. We talked about them. They're plus 380. They're the favorites. And quite often, you do see the team that just won, um, you know, be the favorite once again. And, and why not? You know, there's been some change to their team, but they still have, you know, I'd say one of the best blue lines in the league, an outstanding talent up top. Of course, one of their best players, the guy that won the con Smythe, was Kale McCarr, not even McKinnon or, or Rantanen or one of those guys. Uh, the Maple Leafs, the Florida Panthers, the Hurricanes. What are you thinking here for some Stanley Cup predictions? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, I'm not really surprised that the Leafs are plus 700 because they have talent on that team. But a lot of the teams in the East have a ton of talent. And um I'm not going to disparage Leafs or Leaf fans, but they still need to win a series before I can feel confident about them. But we'll see how the team plays throughout uh, the season. But playoffs are a different beast. If I'm going to look at two teams in the East uh, first off, and uh, I'm not going to go into a, a long spiel on them, but if you're going to take a team in the East, Andrew, you got to get be taking because the the Eastern Conference is so loaded this year. Um, it is going to be super tough. You've got to take a team not only that is at least in that range of 10 to 1 or higher, but a team that you believe is going to win the division and finish in one of those top two seeds. Because while it is loaded for bear in, in that East, the teams I think that finish in that 7th and 8th sort of um, spot, which, which are more or less the wild card spots, let's call, let, let's call it, um, and you're, they're going to play the, the top two seeds. I think the important thing on playing futures is to take a team that you believe is going to, number number one, finish um, higher up in the standings, a team that's going to have home ice, and a team that is going to play one of the weaker teams, albeit still a good team in that conference. And with that in mind, the Florida Panthers, uh, they couldn't get back by Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is their kryptonite, it seems like. But they're plus 900. Um, I think they are a little better than they were last year. And last year, they were the team that ended up winning the President's Trophy. And the President's Trophy jinx, as we call it, um, lived up to expectation again as they were bounced in the second round. And But I think at plus 900, that has value in it. Um, and then the other one is Carolina. Carolina had a very good season again they just falter in the playoffs once again. It can't win on the road. They're going to have to find a way to win away from home um, because they're super at home uh, in the playoffs. So, And you're getting plus 1,100 on them. So there are two teams at that point where they are in that 10 to 1 range where um, I believe they're, they're, they'll likely win their divisions. They will likely win their first rounds. And then we start to see what the matchups are sort of moving forward. But they, they'll avoid each other. Uh, right up until likely the conference finals, if they just continue to win. And then, uh, you know, 
I'm looking at, I would have two teams in a conference finals at nine to one and 11 to one. So that's my thought process on as, as far as cup contenders go. What are you looking at, Andrew? Well, you know, same thing for me. You know, I want to get that great price. I want to be able to get some hedging. And I want it to be a team that I really think could make that push to the conference final. Uh, I really like those two picks that you made. Um, both teams that made off season and definitely can take that next step. I'm taking a look at the New York Rangers here. I'm going to give one team from the East and one team from the West. And very simple. You know, I think that uh, the Rangers have a great mix of, you know, the older veteran players and some younger players that are ready to take that next step up. And they have a great blue line, lots of great defensemen, you know, a Vesna Trophy winning goaltender. They made a great move picking up Vincent Trocek. I mean, I just feel like they're ready to take that next step. We're getting 20 to one. Are you kidding me? On a team that made it very, very close um, last year to, uh, you know, to finally making that leap up. And to me, I just feel like this price will not be there in a couple months time. So Carm, this is a team, I think, in the Eastern Conference, ready to take a huge step this year. They've already made the playoffs. They've already made it past the, sec the first round. They've already, you know, been battling and, and coming close. This is the year I think they can take that next step. And the fact that I'm getting 20 to 1, well, that's pretty exciting to me. Over in the West, the Calgary Flames is the team I'm looking at here. They possibly had the best one-week turnaround that I've ever seen a hockey team have really you know it's crazy everybody wanted to you know absolutely dismiss this team after they lost two key players with Kachuk and Gaudreau and they go ahead and pick up you know Kadri, Huberdo, and Uyghur so um, I'm not just liking this team because of those additions but I love the way they acted I think that adds more depth to this team and of course they've got a great goaltender so you can get Calgary right now guys at 15 to 1 so I like that one quite a bit uh, those are one pick there from the East, one pick from the West. And again, those four teams you and I just listed, rock solid hockey teams. And we're a little bit surprised off those prices we're getting in the Stanley Cup futures. Carm, when I saw that price on the Leafs, I thought that might have been the number for them to make the second round. I didn't know that was the price <laughs> for the Stanley Cup for them. And so I was, I was a little bit confused. But uh, what about a dark horse pick for you? What about one that's a little bit higher? and a little bit different odds um, for, for you here for the Stanley Cup. I don't know, Andrew, like my my head, uh, Rangers 20 to one, uh, Calgary Flames by you 15 to one, my head just went, because I love those prices. Those are great prices uh, from you on those ones. You know, I look at dark horses and we're gonna go to literally to that same uh, conference in the West and the Pacific and, um, a lot of people aren't saying the Edmonton Oilers are a dark price, but they, they fall into my dark price category because they are 15 to one or higher and they are 15 to one. And again, my keys to the future are different than anyone. Uh, the keys to playing future bets are different than everyone else's where people just put a future bet in and say, let it sit and let's see if they win it. Mine is, let me take a future bet for a team I know is gonna make the playoffs, a team that has a shot at winning the division and a team that can make a deep run. And, and again, the East is the beast this year. Uh, the West, I think it's going to be a little easier for teams like, of course, like the Calgary Flames, the Edmonton Oilers, Colorado, um, uh, you know, Nashville, St. Louis, uh, to, to make the playoffs. There aren't uh, 10 teams battling for eight playoff spots uh, uh, like there are in the East with, with two or three also runs. Um, the West, I think we, we can sort of narrow down five teams we know are going to make the playoffs, and you start to look at those teams and who has the best odds of those that can finish in one of the top two spots and uh, make a deep run, and the Oilers fall into that category for me. So it is uh, more about the odds than looking and trying to break down the Edmonton Oilers and whether this team has the DNA to make it far enough. Um, they had a good run last year, but at those odds – and the fact that I, fin I, I, I figure they're going to finish uh, in one of the top four spots in the West, uh, give, me the, give me the Oilers as a dark horse, plus 15 to 1. Yeah, that is a really good price. And based on how they did already, like you mentioned, they did well in the playoffs last year. And I know we're not going too in-depth here, uh, Carm, but I think Jack Campbell's a good goaltender, man. And picking up him to be a rock steady number one, 
where let's be honest, they didn't really have a number one last year. I think he's going to be really great for them. So I like that one quite a bit. I'll yeah. keep it short and sweet with this dark horse. Um, you, you wanted to mention? Yeah, no, I, and I was just going to say, you know, I mean, obviously they're that price because they are in the uh, they are in the conference with the defending Stanley Cup champions and the beasts of the West, mm -hmm. the Colorado yeah. Avalanche. So, you know, I mean, when you have a price on uh, on uh, when the Stanley Cup favorites is in your conference and they're uh, the plus three fifty or plus four hundred. Uh, by default, the prices on the teams in the West are going to be slightly higher than the teams like the East, where we see a lot of teams grouped in a price, uh, you know, in prices of like plus 700 up to plus 1500. So I get it. Uh, they've got to go through the avalanche if they want to make it to the cup. But if they get to the conference finals and they're playing the avalanche, I have a ticket on a plus 1500 team that I can then hedge out um um against the avalanche if that is the actual uh, i'm not saying that is what's going to happen but um they'll make a deep run i'll be able to make a profit and at the end of the day it's it's about profits if you want to take those vacations you got to make some profits andrew give me your dark horse well I, i'm looking at the odds sheet right now if we can pull it up again here the the stanley cup odds the minnesota wild they're 17 to 1. if we look back and remember who did they lose to again in the first round last year? Oh yeah, the St. Louis Blues. They are 40 to one. How does that make any sense? This is a team that has so many veteran players on that team, a great goaltender, guys that are built for the playoffs. They're physical, they score the goals in front of the net and they score the nice ones as well. At 40 to one, the St. Louis Blues is the team I had to put on my list. I know you've made some money on this team. It's time for me to include them in my pack here with these futures because at 40 to one, that price is way too good to pass up on. It's a really competitive West, very competitive division there, but at 40 to one, you can pass that up, especially the fact that we're seeing the Wild, the team they knocked out last year, Carm, are 17 to one. I don't think that really <laughs> makes sense yeah. to me, you know? So that's, it seems like people are really high on the Wild this year, but the fact is the Blues are gonna be healthy this year and the team they knocked out, you know, 20 points down, that's that's crazy. I don't know. I, I like that 40 to 1 quite a bit here. Yeah, no, I, I like it as well too, Andrew. That that's a, a nice price. And again, the prices in the West are going to be a little more uh, a little more inflated again because you know the cup favorites and we we saw what um the Avalanche did. They pretty much steamrolled everyone. <laughs> uh last season so it is uh if you're going against them and uh, like i said uh, they are the cup favorites for a reason with all that talent um you're going to get a better price on anyone else so it all depends on what your um what your keys to to playing future bets are if you just want to sit on one uh, then maybe the avalanche are the way to go to to repeat um much like tampa bay did a couple of years ago but um for me uh, I, I i take sort of a different route Andrew, we want to look at some divisional winners, and then we are going to put some graphics up as well, too, which will uh, show you our leans on these as well on the show. But, um, Andrew, let's go to divisional winners. What do you say? Absolutely. Uh, let's start. We're going to go just down the list. We'll, we'll casually talk about these, but for the most part, we'll go down the list, take a look at things. And, uh, well, let's start with the division that I think is going to be a lot more competitive this year than maybe it was in years past, and that's the Metro, Carm. Um, this Metro division, uh, we already talked about a couple of those teams already, but taking a look at that division, a team that I like already for them, and I think it's going to be much improved, the New Jersey Devils. And you cannot believe the price on that one. When I take a look at this one, 16 to 1 for the Devils to win that division. I mean, I know it's a stretch because they've got those talented teams that are favorited up there at the top of the list. But when you go ahead and you see – how many draft picks this team has piled up over the years. And then this is a team that if you look back over the past two seasons, they were riddled with COVID, it seems like, more than anybody. They haven't had a healthy goaltender in what feels like three years. And they go ahead and pick up a two-time Stanley Cup winner in Andre Palat. I feel like at 16-1, to 1, it was one of those ones. I couldn't pass up. I had to toss on here. And I feel like they're going to be a lot more competitive than the uh, market is indicating. So the Devils for me in the Metro, but it's a very competitive division. And I feel like that one's going to be 
we're going to see odds on those games, Carm, that maybe shouldn't be there because I think it's going to be, you know, any given night we could see, you know, those top three or four teams really battle it out. Well, Andrew, New Jersey Devils, uh, you've been dining on a lot of those Buddy Valestra Cake Boss cakes because that sugar must have got to you. But I get it. 16 to 1, it's a great price. Um, my price is a lot shorter, uh, of course. Uh, I, I mentioned Carolina. I think they're going to have another great season. They're plus 180. Um, I think that's a good price. In all honesty, that's a good price. This is a division that has the Rangers in it as well, too. Um, so I love your value, uh, but I'm going for plus 180 on the Carolina um, the Carolina Hurricanes. I think I said Carolina Panthers. Carolina Hurricanes for me. <laughs> You're in football mode, and Carm, you have been crushing yeah. football. So congratulations to you on that for sure. It's also hockey time, though. Uh, going down the list, looking at some of these other divisions, the Pacific Division. The Pacific, well, look, you and I have already talked about two teams from that division. It's one we think is going to be really competitive. And taking a look at the odds, well, you mentioned it a couple different times, how we're getting some good odds in that division and just in general in the West based on seeing how heavy of favorites the Colorado Avalanche are to win the whole thing. So uh, I'm curious to see, number one, what you think about my picks. I'm kind of keeping up the reputation of uh, the plus price here, uh, the nice, big, big, juicy prices. But what are you thinking here for the Pacific Division? I'm going right back. I, I'm, uh, I'm 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 putting the I'm going to the well, Andrew. I, I'm putting the drill bit in, and and uh, it's coming up all oil, all oil. The Edmonton Oilers plus through two thirty, my friend. I am going to get myself a McDavid uh, uh, jersey, and uh, it's all oil, my friend. Edmonton Oilers plus two thirty. Take that one to the bank. You know, the prices you're getting on them for what they were able to do last year in the playoffs, I cannot blame you whatsoever. We'll have to get a jersey sent to your house. No, no. In Ontario, Carm isn't a, a Matthews fan. He's a McDavid fan, especially with all these futures you're making. Uh, for me, I'm looking at 5-1 to one here with the LA Kings, a team that, first of all, is going to be a lot healthier They've got a lot of players that play two-way hockey. They protect their own end. They've got a goaltender that's young and playing very well, Drew Doughty. Sounds like he's healthier than he's been in a few years. Had a great summer. They go ahead and pick up Kevin Fiala. Uh, this is going to be a sleeper team. We're going to be able to cash plenty of underdog tickets with them. I think they're rock solid. You know, not a lot of big names and highlight real guys, but uh, at 5-1, to one, I had to give it a shot. And like I said, with futures for me, you know, there's some times where I don't mind in the top favorites but with these two divisions i looked at i saw some value so five to one for me on the la kings and we'll keep the uh the shopping cart that going down the aisle i'll call it here carm with the central division and i'm just gonna put it like this i'll, I'll start off real quick here carm i took the avalanche <laughs> you know like i just gave a five to one and a 16 to all these different prices i'm taking the avalanche because I don't think they're going to get upset. I don't think they might not be as dominant out the gate as they were last year, but they still have a great lineup, man. I got to go with the Avalanche. Yeah, you know, you, you talked about pushing the cart down the aisle, uh, grocery shopping, and, and, and some of the big grocery stores have, Andrew, it's called like loss leaders. They will literally put like bread, a loaf of bread at like 99 cents because they want people to come and buy the bread because while they're there, getting that bread that they are going to lose money on the store they are those people are going to uh, uh turn around and buy a lot of other things uh and and you make sales and colorado yeah. avalanche are a lost leader for the books at minus 150 because the avalanche are going to win um this division hands down i feel somehow that this should actually have a handicap to it which is like colorado minus eight and a half points uh, minus 150 on it because they are going to win that division. Give me the Avalanche, minus 150, and let's just move on to the Atlantic. I, I got to say, Carb, is it bad that when you talked about the loss leader, it reminded me of Costco with the hot dogs? But to Absolutely. The prices? <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought of. They refused to make the prices higher because they want to get people in the store. That's what I thought of, but uh hey it's a good comparison and i think the avalanche are that team the avalanche are a costco hot dog this year 
and they're going to win that division <laughs> pretty easily. Uh, yeah, at the Atlantic Division, um, I like the Panthers. You know, I I, th- I think that the more I thought about it, the more I thought about picking up Matthew Kachuk, I don't think he's a crazy goal scorer by any means, but I think one of the reasons why they, they, they did so poorly against Tampa Bay is because they were kind of a soft team. They had all the talent. They were kind of soft, and Kachuk brings that physicalness, and let's be honest here, they're still a, a relatively young team the Florida Panthers, that they aren't as old as people think they are. And so I think that, you know, all these lessons can pile up and really adversity is a good thing. We see so many teams have to go through it before they end up winning. And I'm expecting a good year from them. So Florida, they can score a car. Give me Florida to win that division. I'm not going to add much more to that, Andrew, because I like Florida as well, too. So um, chalk up the Florida Panthers for me, and we are going to move over to some uh, NHL uh, team totals uh, 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 next. So um, let's get let's head over there. Yeah, why don't you start us off, Carm, uh, with any uh, season points uh, that you have ready for us? We obviously did a video. We've got another one coming out uh, shortly. It's going to be separate on Wager Talk TV, giving out some season point totals and. Um, obviously it's different than NFL and NBA, right? It's not wins because, um, you get one point for, uh, an overtime loss and stuff like that. So this is season point totals for these teams. Uh, anything catch your eye for this year? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to go through four of them and then I'll throw it over to you, uh, to give us some and and then we'll close up, uh, close up the show. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to East for, uh, for three of them. And the first one is, uh, the Philadelphia Philadelphia Flyers. I'm taking the team totals at 73 and a half. They had 61 last year. And you remember, they actually had a good start to the NHL season last year. And then completely, for lack of a better word, shit the bed. And it's going to be the same thing this year. It It is it is troubling what is happening with this team. This is a team that Ron Hextall, before he left, left him with like, I think it was $34 million in cap space. Fletcher blew all that money. This team, I think, is over <laughs> Uh, yeah. by a million dollars on cap space. But next year, they get $18 million in cap room. Uh, they are going to be a seller, Andrew, for any of their key parts that they can get rid of this season. I have to believe it, this is a season where they're going to tank um, 61 points for them last year. I don't see them improving much on that. Uh, under 73 and a half for me. Another team that is going to be a seller this year, is going to have a bad year, is the Chicago Blackhawks. Under 66 and a half. Uh, for me on that one. They are uh, obviously a West team. The Edmonton Oilers, um, 104 last year. Their total is at 103 and a half. And I think they improve off of last year's season. So I'm going to go over the total on the Oilers over 103 and a half. And then I'm going to finish it off with the back in the East, the uh, Carolina Hurricanes over 103 and a half. Last year, they had 116. Uh, I don't expect them to get 116 points this year. The East got a lot better, but they are good enough to get over that 103 and a half points. And those are my four totals bets uh, for team totals this season. What about you? I absolutely love those picks. And I got to say, it brings a smile to my face to be talking hockey again here on Puck Time. Just real quick, want to give a shout out to all the people that watch our show, interact with us on Twitter. We're tweeting at us already. Uh, We are pumped to be back here, guys. And, uh, can't wait to get started with the regular season. Don't forget, if you want to get in on our packages, five ninety nine early bird special. You get futures, preseason, regular season, playoffs, everything you name it. Sides, totals, props from Carmine and I. Go to our pages, get that five ninety nine. Carmine crushes soccer. I had a good season in hockey. We also have that special together. One year of Carm soccer, one year of my hockey. Check it out, wagertalk.com. Uh, real quick for me. I talked about the LA Kings to win their division. Obviously, that's kind of a bit of quite a bit of a of a you know a big leap, uh, Karn. But I love that price on it. But I do like them to go over their point total. You know, I already mentioned what I like about them. But I just think this is a team that will fall under the radar. They have a pretty good defensive core. I think picking up Kevin Fiala is a huge addition to that team. They've got Philip Deneau, who's a great two way player. Kopitar. There's got a lot of great things going on with this LA Kings team and a, and a, a sneaky sneaky spot here for them i think to kind of surprise some people when everyone's talking about the flames and oilers i feel like this team in the in the west will have a great uh, a great year for them over 99 and a half points is what i'm looking at for the kings the boston bruins i've given this out on pretty much every show i've done but 
Um, I think we're going to know by Thanksgiving that this team is just not going to be the same team as they were in years past. And a lot of it has to do with their depth issues, missing McAvoy, Grizzlick, and Brad Marshan to start off the season due to injury. That's not going to be good for them. Their decor is not going to be looking good. They're going to give up plenty of goals. I'm not high on the Bruins. Under 96 and a half uh, season points for me is how I'm looking in Beantown. And a prop here, Carm, I looked at it and, and it made, you know, when you said something about the Blackhawks there and how you're not really high on them. Well, we can get plus 260 on the Blackhawks to be the worst team in the NHL. How about that? You know, I don't want to bet on them that much during the season, but I want to get plus 260 at a price for them. I think this team is going to be trading off and giving away, uh, you know, Kane and Taze and some of their top guys. They already got rid of um, Kirby Doc and uh, Debrinket. Why not keep going? Why not just sell the whole farm? I feel like that's what they're going to do. So plus 260 for the Blackhawks to finish last. Are you going to be with, with me on that one, Carm? What do you think? Yeah, you know what? I, I really like it. Obviously, uh, the only team they are going to that might challenge them for that is the uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, I think our producer Dan knows that that his team isn't good, but Dan's got big. He's got bigger fish to fry because he's got he's got the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, fly Eagles, fly! Um, Dan and I are going to the Super Bowl this year because we already know it's going to be the Bills and the Eagles in the Super Bowl. We're going to get tickets. We are going to sit there on the 50-yard line like that episode of Seinfeld with him and Newman. We will be there at the game watching it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. But hockey season's back, Andrew. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get going. I can't wait. Uh, again, you can see on the bottom of your screen, puck time returns on the 10th. Uh, we'll get right into it. We have a few games uh, going on kind of in Europe to start the season off. We're going to get started with the games uh, back in North America. And we have a great week scheduled of hockey games, a lot of great matchups. They always love to start the season off with some great matchups, Carm. So let's throw up a little recap of what we're looking at uh, for some of our leans and, and kind of some stuff that we like here. Um, we've got Carmine's leans here, uh, Florida Panthers, 9-1, to one, Stanley Cup contenders, Carolina, 11-1. to one, The Dark Horse, a team that did very well last year in the playoffs, the Oilers at 15-1. to one, And... Uh, any, anything you you wanted to add to that, Carm? I mean, for those, I mean, I thought those were really great great prices there for those. Yeah, no. Uh, again, uh, uh, for anyone who might be watching this video late or uh, or sort of skim through, uh, my keys to the futures are different. I'm looking for teams that aren't uh, obviously uh, low price favorites, teams that are in that ten to one or higher range that I know that are going to finish in the top of the standings or close to the top of the standings and make deeper runs in the playoffs. Uh, and eventually hedge out for a profit. Uh, I don't need to uh, to hit the um, the coins at the end of the rainbow or whatever. I just need to make money along the way. That's all. It, uh, that's all it's about. I love it. Uh, for me, my Stanley Cup picks, and of course, the dark horse for me as well. I threw out the New York Rangers at twenty to one in the East, and the Calgary Flames at fifteen to one uh, over there in the Western Conference. My dark horse. Couldn't believe the price on this one. The St. Louis Blues at 40 to 1. Can't wait to keep up with these uh, during the season and for Carmine and I to discuss all of our picks and maybe do some updated odds every now and then on some shows that have two or three games. Carmine, we can give some updated future odds. And uh, as far as the division picks, we went through quite a bit of picks. But uh, Carm, the Metro, plus 180 Pacific, Edmonton, plus 230 Central, Colorado. Him and I both like them at minus 150 uh again you know they're like a hot dog at costco you have to bet them they're the easy pick they're a team that we think should be pretty locked in there atlantic division florida plus 200 man i love those picks and uh for me look i started a little bit uh, outside the box here with the metro new jersey 16 to 1 pacific la plus 500 Central Colorado again minus 150 and the same as Carmine with the Atlantic at Florida the plus 200. I am fired up super excited to be back here giving out picks talking some hockey. I know people love their football but man I am ready to talk some hockey. Uh, Carm any last words and oh I'm sorry team total points uh, we got to get into that. 
Um, whew, my bad karma on that one. Philadelphia, under 73 and a half total points for their team. Chicago, under 66 and a half points. Edmonton, over 103 and a half. And Carolina, over 103 and a half for Carmine with his season point totals. And uh, I just gave out two. I looked at LA over 99 and a half season points, Boston under 96 and a half season points, one over, one under. And kind of a cheeky bet here with Chicago to be the worst team, worst regular season record at plus 260. Carm, any final words before we wrap this show up? Mm -hmm. And the next time people see us, we'll be talking about some games. Yeah, listen, the um, that one calendar year. So uh, even though the hockey season ends in May, the, the soccer season will continue on if you pick up that package from the point in which you purchase it uh, for a full calendar year. And it's been a great run thus far. Uh, on the season and and really now a pretty good role 17 and three last 20 uh, soccer plays and of course you're gonna get Andrews hockey he was number one in NHL last year I'm coming after you this <clears throat> this year you mentioned you like New Jersey I'm gonna get uh, some of the boys from New Jersey maybe to take you out so I can take over that number one <laughs> spot so if you get a phone call from like Vinnie Boombats you'll know that it came from me my friend so um, Andrew best of luck on the NHL season we're looking forward to seeing our pucksters in the live chat and uh and getting right back at it awesome stuff Carmen. good to be back here with you again congratulations to you on your success with the football so far of course soccer an amazing run and it's time to kick some ass on the ice with hockey so on behalf of everyone behind the scenes will and dan carmine i'm andrew we'll see you guys next time when do number one and number one equal a great profit one when you join the forces of andrew mckinnis and carmine bianco Andrew dominated this past NHL season, finishing 144% in profit. In simple terms, if you would have bet $100 per percent of play, you won $14,360 betting hockey this season. By also playing $100 per percentage on Carmine Soccer Plays, you won an additional $11,936. And don't forget the World Cup is back this year, giving this package even more value. A full year of soccer sells for $9.99, while NHL through the Stanley Cup is regularly priced at $6.99. This package regularly retails for $16.98. But head to either Handicappers page and get this Carmine and Andrew NHL soccer combo for only $11.99.